Hey, everybody. Uh, today, right now is the time of year when people are trying to uh, to get things done pretty fast. Uh, tour season's on us. There are people that are trying to book accommodations and things like that. Hopefully, most of you have already finished that process. But there was a team this morning, Pygmy Pony, that asked a, a good question. Mike of Pygmy Pony said, uh, do you have any preferred accommodations. And he asked specifically about Pocatello, but I think the general question is in some places we recommend that you stay with certain people In other places, we don't say anything about it. And the reason that I don't say anything about it in a lot of places, because it doesn't make any difference. We don't have a special relationship with any of the restaurants or hotels in that town. So one's as good as the other. But it's a good question. What I thought I would do really quickly this afternoon, again, while people are trying to do these things right now, if they haven't done them already, is just go through the accommodations that we have and uh, talk about why we chose the people we did. And in places where it doesn't matter, I can give you a little bit of a heads up about why it doesn't matter or, or maybe what some of your options are. So let's talk about uh, right before the first night. Hotel Malad is a wonderful place. I, I kind of like just going down there and hanging out. Uh, it's kind of funny because uh, when I bought my GT350 three years ago, there weren't very many in Southern Idaho. And a couple of days after I bought it, I, I had to drive down there for some reason. It might've been just to go down there to talk to him to make sure that we were good to go for the tour of Idaho. I came driving up and the only other one I've ever seen that looks exactly like mine was sitting right beside the curb there. So I felt really great about it until I drove to the hotel Malad. But anyway, Great place, really nice to spend the night, and it makes getting an early start on day one way easier. There's food in the lab, there's a hardware store, there's an auto parts store that's real auto parts farm supply store that's got about everything. So getting down to Malad early that day, staying at the Hotel Malad, it, it kind of the Hotel Malad's kind of an unusual place. It's an older place, it's got some history to it, and it's kind of got the vibe that the tour of Idaho is all about, which is a theme that prevails as you move along the route. So that's why we chose the Hotel Malad. It's better than the places out by the freeway. Now, you're not obligated to stay there. If you want to stay at the places out by the freeway, that's just fine with me. But the Hotel Malad was a little bit of a cooler place, and that's why we chose them. So hopefully you get to Pocatello at the end of day one. And in Pocatello, uh, almost everyone stays two nights here. Uh, as many of you know, I used to own a soundstage and lighting company, and I used to make accommodations for a lot of the artists that I booked for shows in Pocatello. So I do actually have a working relationship with the event managers at several of the local hotels. But here's the problem. The, the hotels that I have a relationship with are not ones that I think are particularly good for you all because they tend to be out near the freeway. They're kind of high class places. Not to say that you are not high class, but they tend to be places uh, that are pretty far from the services that you all need. So a lot of teams do that. A lot. Of, the La Quinta was my favorite place. I think it's changed names now, but I always liked the La Quinta. I, I worked with them quite a bit and put up quite a few people there. Uh, uh, you can stay at any hotel in Pocatello you want, but here's what I would be thinking if it were me. I want some place that's kind of centrally located. And... If I were planning on having tires or service done at Power Sports, I'd want some place that was a little bit closer to Power Sports. So if you go down to the University District, there's the Roadway Inn, there's the Thunderbird. There's a lot of places down there that aren't very expensive, and they're, they're sort of in the middle of things. You can walk to a lot of places from there, and, and that tends to be a little bit more convenient. If you are out by a, if you're out on any of the hotels or motels that are out off of any of the freeway exits, in that case, you're looking at, uh, at having to hire a taxi or an Uber or something like that to get around. They do have Uber in Pocatello, by the way, and uh, a lot of the teams the last few years have used Uber to get around quite effectively. So in Pocatello, it really doesn't matter. The Thunderbird and the roadway, again, are kind of centrally located, what makes them nice. Uh, the Thunderbird is where a lot of the Craigslist girls like to book rooms as well, so you might have a little bit more of an adventure there than you had counted on. Roadway's a little bit run down, but they're all serviceable places. The other thing is, you know, if you're dragging a lot of like dirty gear in and out of a hotel room, it's kind of nicer to have a place that just opens out onto the street. And the Thunderbird is that. The roadway is not. Um, there is a Motel 6. And of course, they don't care about things like that. All the doors open up and you can walk right out. So 
In Pocatello, it really doesn't matter. One place is as good as the next. Uh, there's no discount that I could get for the tour that would be better than AAA, which most of you probably already have. So it's whatever you want to do. Pocatello is a pretty big town, close to 60,000 people, closer to 70,000 if you count Chubbuck, uh, our sister city. And there's all kinds of places to stay. So look at a map and, and figure it out. So uh, uh, same kind of deal at the end of day two, trail day two, when you get to Arco. There's a bunch of motels in Arco, and I've stayed in all of them. Uh, I have a lot of friends in Arco. I used to do, when I was a physicist, I used to do some work with the people in Arco that had a really nice science museum there that I was briefly on the board of directors for. And uh, I, I like them all. Uh, the, the DK is the place where I usually stay in the tour. Uh, if you remember a few weeks ago, I told you a story about showing up there at four in the morning, all dinged up. And I was impressed that they actually got up and opened the door and, and uh, next morning helped me load my bike onto the trailer. So I've always had a soft spot for that place. But there are three or four motels in Arco. I've stayed in all of them. The people are all nice and you can stay in any one of them you want. Now, at the end of day three, you just have one option. You're going to be staying at the Smoky Bar store with Kalen. And uh, again, we we configured the tour specifically to put you there because I think it's very important that you meet Kayla and Dennis. I think it's very important that you go to the Smoky Bar store because the tour of Idaho exists principally to support businesses like Kayla. That's what we want you to do. She's a wonderful person. They'll take great care of you there. And everybody tells me that's one of the highlights of the tour. Uh, in fact, I learned about Kayla from people who had done the tour Every time I'd ever been there, the Smoky Bar store hadn't been open. So I'd been by a few times, but I'd never been in. Finally, a team a few years ago, in fact, it was the movie stars, uh, Tony Jenkins, Steven, and those guys, and Jesse said, you got to meet, you got to go to the Smoky Bar store. You got to meet Kaylin. And I did. And they were absolutely right. And it's just been a great addition to what we do. So then the next day you are in, uh, let's see, day three, uh, the end of day three, you're staying there. At the end of day four, you are staying in Chalice. Again, Chalice, it doesn't matter. I've had bad luck with all the places in Chalice. Chalice is a weird little place, and uh, I don't want to get into it too much. It's one of the few places in Idaho where I wouldn't live, despite the fact that the riding is really good in Chalice. Locally, it's just really funky. I have some friends that live there, and uh, and I'm not going to drag them into us, but they know what I'm talking about. And every hotel and motel and chalice that I have booked a room in has burned me at one time or another. Uh, you know, you show up late at night, and summer's a busy season for them, and it doesn't matter that you have a reservation. If you don't show up, <laughs> they're going to give your room to somebody else. That happened to one team that even paid for the room in advance. So that's why I don't recommend any of them in particular. Just good luck. Deal with whoever you want to deal with. Uh, the one that's close to the village square is where I've stayed the past few years. They've treated me pretty well. Uh, but any of them will work. Uh, they're, they're all equally good or equally bad, whatever way you want to look at it. The night after that, you're in Salmon. And once again, uh, there's a bunch of good places to stay in Salmon. I've stayed at the Sacagawea, and I liked it there. Uh I've stayed at the place that's got the big bear on it. I think it may be called the Bear Inn. I liked it there. It's a little bit more upscale, but they're both good places. So uh, I, I, there's at least a half a dozen more places to stay in Salmon. So just call around and uh, look and see what's close to where you want to be. The nice, the Sacagawea is a little bit out of town, which is the only thing that's inconvenient about that. So you're going to have to hop on your bike to go anywhere. If you stay at the at the Big Bear, I think it's called, or if you stay at the place down on the main drag on 93 right across the the river there's at least two down there those are all within walking distance of downtown so you can just drop off your bike drop off your gear and walk around a little bit the night after that you are in shoot now we recommend the village at north fork but there are other options there and i talked about those a little bit when i talked about when i went through the days of the tour the village at North Fork has always treated us and riders extremely well, but there's a place just down the road called the Wagon Hammer that's owned by a guy that rides dirt bikes, uh, Wagon Hammer Mike, nice guy. And there's a couple places up the road a little bit farther north that are within a few miles that are also perfectly good. So there's at least three places within a mile or so of the village at North Fork that'll work if you can't get a reservation there or something doesn't work out. 
I really like the village at North Fort because everything is all kind of right there that you need. So at the Wagon Hammer, for instance, I don't think they have hot food. So you're going to have to go up to the village at North Fort uh, to eat. Uh, the other place does have hot food. They have a dynamite pizzeria at the other place that's a few miles north. Uh, and there are even some other places there. I see signs along the road all the time that says, you know, bunks, 45 bucks or something like that. So there's a bunch of options that you have there. And you can get on Google and you can find them all. But if you absolutely get hung up and you're a 2020 team, PM me and I'll look up some addresses for you. But again, the village at North Fork is actually preferred there because they've been so nice to us. Um, after that, uh, you run into this issue where you're you're going across day seven and you end up going to Elk City and then Lowell. Now, uh, uh, the the lady at Lowell has been a little difficult to get to because of the pandemic. She hasn't been there a lot, but I understand she is there. And uh, you just have to keep calling until you get her. Uh, I don't know that leaving messages does any good in a lot of those small businesses like that. I think you just have to keep calling until you get somebody. But there are other options. As I said, uh, when I was talking about the tour, uh, a couple of uh, PBR Bundys ago, when you get to Lowell, uh, you're, it's okay to stay at Elk City. If you don't want to go all the way to Lowell, stay at Elk City. It just means you got to get up even earlier the next day. But there's a, a nice place. There used to be two places in Elk City. I think it's down to one now. Um, you could also stay at Kuski if you wanted to. Uh, uh, Kuski's just fine. It just means that uh, you're probably going to alter your route out of Elk City a little bit. You're you're going to want to take some of those roads that'll take you more towards Kuski so you don't burn up a lot of gas. And at Kuski, if you stay there, you're going to have a 25-mile drone up Highway 12 to get back to Lowell. But no one's going to ding you if you do that. That's You know, you might want to tell me in advance that's what you're going to do. But if you want to stay in Kuski, that's okay. But the very best plan is to get fuel as much as you can carry at Elk City and then get to Lowell and stay in the little restaurant that's there at Lowell. That'll make the next day a lot easier. The day after that, you're staying at Loxa Lodge. And as I said before, it's a wonderful place, but it's incredibly difficult to get a reservation there. The other thing is that over holiday weekends, sometimes they require at least two nights. So I put up a thread on the Tour of Idaho forum a couple of days ago called 2020 Logistics. And I understand a couple of you have had to make two nights worth of reservations. That uh, Go to that thread. If you have to, and if there's there's teams out every day and there's probably a team behind you or ahead of you that you can work with on this whole reservation process. And the thing that would be nice is if you all cooperated on that so that, uh, you know, you can share the cost and it may make it possible for someone to get in that can't get in there now if you're holding a reservation for a night that you're not going to use. Uh the night after that, the place that we recommend, and we, we feel strongly enough about it that we've made it a challenge point, is the Ryan Hotel. Donna is a legend, a tour legend. Everybody loves Donna. Uh, you may not meet her. You may meet her daughter. Uh, but occasionally the Ryan is full. And if the Ryan's full, you can stay someplace else. And, and I'll waive that challenge point in that event if the Ryan is full. You know, we'll, we'll come up with something for you to do to make it up or waive it. But... Stay at the Ryan if you can. Again, it, it, Donna is someone that I want you to meet. This is a tour of Idaho. It's not just I want to ride my dirt bike as fast as I can down a bunch of trails. No, the idea is you are meeting and talking to people on the way. You're getting a sense of the geology, the geography, the history, the kind of people that live here. And the people that we send you to all represent, I think, a certain type of vibe that when you put them all together makes up this really unique place called Idaho. Idaho is like no place else I've ever lived. I love it here. I'm never going to leave. And I want you to understand why I feel the way I do about it. And meeting all these people and staying in some of these places will help you with that. Then finally, the final night, there's a place that I talked about last PBR Monday. It's called the Eagle's Nest, and it's up in Priest River. It's pretty close to Sundance. So if you ride down out of Sundance and you take the quickest way back down to Priest River, which is on a paved road, you can be there in 20 or 25 minutes from Sundance. That's a good place for people that are coming to pick you up to get there. Uh, alternatively, you can ride in the Sandpoint, but that's a pretty good little drone down the slab if you're going to ride from Sundance down to Priest River, then take the highway. I think it's two 
over to Sandpoint. So my plan is always, and when I used to shuttle people, I would tell them, I will meet you at the Eagle's Nest. You don't have to stay there, but there's a restaurant right across the street and uh, there's a big parking lot there. So have all your stuff there and that's where I'll pick you up. So that's it. Uh, that's the reason I chose the places that I did choose. And uh, there's wide agreement with me in all these places that they're pretty cool places to stay. So in the places where we make a recommendation, there's a reason for it. If it doesn't work out, that's okay. You don't have to stay at the Hotel Milan. You don't have to stay with Donna. You uh, you do have to stay with Kayla or else you're sleeping with the bears in the woods. But, excuse me, it's not COVID-19. It's seasonal allergies. I was outside working all day today. There's good reasons to stay in those places, though. You should try if you can. So that's about it. I wanted to get on this accommodations thing as quickly as possible. Mike and Pygmy Pony, thanks for your question. And I started to place uh, a thread in the forum specifically so people can get on and maybe do a little bit of horse trading in these accommodations if they need to. I've also heard of people using uh, Airbnb to get accommodations. Uh, a couple of years ago, I told the team there is no way you are getting accommodations in Chalice during the Braun Brothers reunion. And they found an Airbnb. Now, I think they paid through the nose for it, but it worked. All right, that's about it. Uh, got to get out of here. Kids are coming home in a few minutes, and uh, Daddy's got to cook dinner. But I wanted to answer that question as quickly as possible. Please keep questions like that coming. Now that we have the teams and it's all serious and it's for real, I will do everything I can to answer your questions as quickly as possible. Before the declaration date passes, there's all kinds of background gack and catter and stuff from people that aren't serious. And those people can just go read the website and discern from it what they can. But once we determine that this is real, you're actually going to come here and you've done, done jump through all the hoops that we ask you to jump through, which frankly are deliberate because we want to see who's serious. Once you've done all that, I'm going to try to answer your questions as quickly as possible and get you the best information I can. Sometimes it might be go back and read this page, but I'll respond to all of your queries as quickly as I can. All right. See you all later on. Thank you. Bye-bye.